What's going on everybody? We're going to look at another game from the 2024 Chess Olympiad. This game uh, is from the Australia Angola match. Uh, with the white pieces we have uh, uh, Grandmaster uh, David Smearden rated 24.75. And with the black pieces representing Angola, uh, Caterino Domingos was international master rated 22.29. So strong player. This game is weird, and this is why I, I chose this game. Uh, I need somebody to get in the comments and let me know what's going on. This game is super weird. I mean, the rating of 22.29, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. Let's get into it. Please like, subscribe, at the very least, hit the uh, thumbs up. But I definitely want to hear what you guys think in the comments below. What happened here? David Smearden, E4, E5, right? Looks normal, respectable. Knight F3, D6, Philidor. Again, I've been picking games with uh, obscure openings, openings that we don't see as much, right? Philidor. So a little uh, dubious reputation, but again, it's not bad. And it takes us off the, uh, you know, well-trodden uh, roads of the Roy Lopez Petrov. So I'm thankful for just that alone. D4, right? Typical principal defense to the, uh, excuse me, um, uh, approach uh, to the Philidor. Also, Bishop C4 is very, very popular. Now, normal is E takes D4, but again, there's other responses. People try knight F6, try to mix it up, right? Knight D7, stuff like that. Even queen E7. All right. Bishop C4. Again, Paul Morphy um, would be proud of this game. This To me, this game just shows how good Paul Morphy was back in the uh, um, 19th century playing uh, chess. Because these type of positions were just right up right up his alley here. Bishop E7. Um, again, I mean, black is already just entering uh, deep waters um, at this point. So now, D takes E5. I'm, it, it's, I almost want to question if the game was arranged. It's, 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 so it's the way it is. Um, anyway, knight takes e5. Knight takes e5. D takes e5. There's no way that white is trading queens here. Queen h5. Again, this looks like amateur hour. Beginning hour. So we have the double threat of, you know, here and here. Pick your poison. So then queen d7 is played. I mean, what in the world? Only reasonable move seems to be G6 here. Queen takes. And then Knight F6. Something like that, right? Then, you know, Bishop H6 to Queen D6. That seems, listen, it's it's dubious. Black is, is busted here, too. They just down material for no reason. But at least it's some kind of attempt at recovery. You know, something like that, sample line, right? But after here, black is saying, hey, I'm going to keep the queens on no matter what. So, queen takes f7, king d8. And again, I expect this type of play from somebody that just started playing chess, not an international master, 22-29. So, I need, I need answers. I need an investigation. I need a report filed. About this game, castles. Knight uh, Bishop F6. Now, of course, is the offering of queens. Nobody in their right mind, from fourteen hundred all the way up to world champion levels, is going to trade queens here. It's just ridiculous. So Smearden does not do the ridiculous. Queen H5. Again, another offer of queen trading here. Here's another attempt if, you know, that I give in the variations. That would have just been meant by uh, the check here. And here's the 
is just a slick mate right there. <laughs> just um, if Black tried Queen G4, so he tries to trade with Queen E8. Now, interestingly enough, after Queen F7. King d8, right? Castle, bishop f6, queen h5, and queen e8 takes place, right? They're offering the trade of queens. Even if white traded queens, which he didn't, I'm just showing you a variation. Even if he traded queens, black is black is, is still is still busted here. It just uh, the game just doesn't. Just doesn't make sense. Doesn't sit right at all. So Queen E8. And White continues to attack as as he should, as I think most people would. Uh Bishop E7. Queen F3, avoiding the trade of Queens. Again, another another Queen maneuver. Queen G6. Check. Knight C3. Alright, just adding more pieces. Uh C6. I right, bring the rook to the third rank. Attacking the queen. Queen attacks e5. And instead of developing and laying a move like knight f6, he says, hey, you know what? I got to protect this pawn, which is, again, oh, boy. <laughs> um, Good move by Smitten. Again, exploiting the just dubious position of this queen here. Like I said, please get in the comments below, especially if you if you're there you're at the game. I mean, this game looks. I mean, I don't want to throw shade on the players, but I'm like, man, it just it looks like like black wasn't even trying. Or I'm trying to I'm still I'm I'm just trying to like legitimize the the moves. I can't. That's how bad black is playing. White to me is doing what he has to do, but black is playing really just super dubious. So this move right here, of course, this is something I talk about in many of my videos. Again, please like, subscribe, hit the thumbs up button right now if you can. Um, check the donation links below. There's also going to be books um, below and videos. I always put books and videos. If you uh, purchase one of those, that also supports the channel. So there's many ways to support the channel using links below. Here right here is um, something I talk about all the time in a lot of my videos is attacking when you're worse from from worse positions here black is attacking two pieces the bishop on f4 bishop on c4 all right looks good on paper oh my god what is white going to do how is white going to preserve its material all you got to do is look at this this position black has no development so even even if black even if excuse me even if white lost a piece he's still up in development if white lost two pieces right now, he would still be ahead in development. This is how bad um, black's position is. So often attacking, not often, most of the time attacking from bad positions, truly bad positions, not ones that just look bad, but ones that are truly bad, backfire most of the times. Because what you should be trying to do when you're worse is you should be trying to get to equalization. You should be trying to consolidate. Right, the counterattack is not the order of the day. All right, and these are based off principles, you know, that Stein has talked about over a hundred years ago. All right, when you have the advantage, there should be a move there that will maintain or continue that advantage, right, or or, or, or increase that advantage. Excuse me. But if you are worse, there's not there there won't be a move that is going to give you an advantage all of a sudden because you have to go unless unless I scratch that unless your opponent blunders and just then there's a move you know and you know whatever hangs a queen then there is a move that will give you an advantage however if you're in a worse position is is clearly worse then only thing you can do is try to maintain that position as it is and hopefully for you, your opponent will make some inferior moves and now you can improve until you equalize. Sometimes the opponent will make a blunder so bad that 
you can go from being lost to winning. But most of the time, your opponent might make an error and you go from being worse to, okay, now you're a little bit worse. And then next thing you know, you're equal. Right? Those are the type of moves you have to look forward to and, and um, um, gradually improve your position. So for the most part, unless your opponent has made an egregious mistake, moves like this, B5, these moves that out, you know, outrageous, just counterattacking, well, hey, I'm just going to win a piece, I'm going to fix all my problems right away, usually do not work. And we can see that what happens here. Paul Morphy, of course, would be proud, right? A lot of you people out there will play a move like Bishop B3. This position is so bad for black that you're still winning after Bishop B3, um, you know, let's say Knight F6, right? White is, white is still winning, right? White is still winning here. Yeah. So let me just show you though, even, even after that's what happened during the game. But let me just, let me just give you an example. So even after this dubious move, right? Bishop B5, let's say. You weren't tactically sound. Even if you're not tactically sound, I mean, listen, you could just play bishop, you know, bishop here and still win and still be maintaining, not losing the piece. But let's say you just say, you know what, I'm playing bishop b3. And he took the bishop. White's position is too strong. Queen c7, right? With the idea of queen takes c6 check, tack on a rook. Position is too strong. So black, if he's gonna try to maintain any type of uh, position, he has to play queen g6, protecting uh, this asset right here. Too much development now. Rook a d1. Right, threatening in the back rank. Let's say bishop g4. Right, threatening this rook. Protecting here at the same time. So now you do this. And if he tried to do this, just bust it. Rook takes. Bishop takes, and here's a nice little tactic here. And you see how you will win the queen by a little deflection. Game over right there. That's just a little variation. There's so many uh, tactics here available for white in the position. But I just wanted to give you an example that there are so many ways because to win for white because black's position is, is that bad. So, again, Paul Morphy will be proud because instead of backing up, smearing and being a strong player himself, realized that, hey, there's no, I shouldn't be backing up from anything. I had this tremendous lead in development, have open files, open diagonals. My opponent's position is full of weakness. I'm going in. So he plays knight takes b5 here. C takes b5. Check. Grabs the pawn. Gets rid of, excuse me, gets rid of the bishop here. Again, White has tons of options. He could have played, you know, queen c, uh, queen c6 attacking this rook. Um, but instead, he just simplifies things, right? So by playing bishop takes f6, now he's saying, you know what? I'm gonna go into the trade of queens. This move is forced. So. Queen takes and now the power of just check. So now um, black has to acknowledge that and capture. And now how many pawns uh, <laughs> up is white? So the uh, piece materials, the piece count is equal, <laughs> right? Two rooks and the bishop. But goodness gracious, right? Black is up. I mean, excuse me, white is up many pawns. So pick your pawn. The queen. And this this is just a real simple chess 
again, I mean, this this is how you, you deal with beginners. You just lock the rook up. Okay, now that rook's out of the game. So I would love, and then at this point, um, at the move 30, uh, white uh, won the game, black resigned. So, man, this game is very, very strange to me. Very strange. One of the strangest I've seen. Actually, um, I don't, it might be this one of the most strangest games I've seen, definitely in the modern times. I mean, this is one of those games, like if you read in one of these uh, chess lore books that, oh, such and such, you know, was paid five hundred dollars to, you know, to you know, not to you know, <laughs> take the game seriously, or, or he wanted to go see. You know, you read these old chess stories, you'd be like, oh, he wanted to go see the soccer match, so we played this game or whatever. This looks like one of those games. It's very, very weird. I mean, now if there's a mistake in the ratings, if this player was not really international master and say was rated like twelve hundred. Then I can see this type of game being played, but somebody rated uh, international having an international master title and rated twenty two twenty nine. This game, this game is is very very uh, suspicious, and I get the whole thing trying to play offbeat openness, but it's just the 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 moves, the tactics, everything was just like like just be, like I can't even say beginner level. It was like beyond beginner level. It was like my first day seeing it, you know, test board level. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Hope you're enjoying the 2024 uh, chess Olympiad. I'm going to keep searching, you know, because I'm having a lot of fun. I'm going to keep searching for like these little offbeat games, obscure games. And this is what's great about the Olympiad, man. You get to see all like, these different players you never heard of. You get to see weird games like this. You get to see the offbeat openings. Like so far, um, I've done... Video on the start, the starting gambit. Um, I've done another another video on the uh, English defense, right? And this is be my third like offbeat uh, opening video I've done on the Philidor. But man, I did not expect uh, to see a game like this played. So again, get in the comments below. Let me know what you think. Please support my channel. Uh, uh getting in those links below. Uh, many methods you could choose to support the channel. And like I said, man. At the very least, we can't do nothing else. Just hit that thumbs up, man, and um, um, you know, support the uh, channel like that, pushing the videos through the algorithm. One thing I, too, I forgot to mention on the other video, Chess Audiobooks is on um, Chess.com, also on Lee Chess, but I play a lot on uh, Chess.com. Yeah, I play a lot of three-minute games. Um, I used to play a lot of one minute. I don't play as much because I don't have uh, enough. To, uh, you know, I got like a little rusty. But every now and then I will play one minute. But most of the games I play is three minutes. Come, come, come! Uh, join me on there, man. You know, like I said, I'm handing out beat downs. You know, I still, I still got it. You know, after all these years, you know, sometimes, you know, I'm not taking the games that serious. But um, you know, I like to have fun on there, and uh, you know, um, you know, so say what's up to me on there, and uh, I'll see you guys on the next video.